V10C1. Fun Winter Breaks Plans Azareth GT Silent Witch December 25th. 2021 7 minutes boys dormitory. Felix was sitting on the sofa in his room, polishing his pocket watch. A custom made one, with a royal crest and blazon in silver. However, what was important to him was neither the royal crest nor the function of the watch, but the item hidden underneath it. Felix closed the once open lid, twisted the bottom part of the pocket watch slightly, then opened the lid again. Afterward, a panel, hidden underneath the hour digits cover, was revealed. The panel was inlaid with a large aquamarine, around which was engraved a magical formula that signified a contract with the spirit. It was the proof of his contract with his contracted spirit, Wildinu. Aquamarine itself was not unusual, but the darker the color, the more expensive it was considered to be. And the aquamarine on Felix's hand was exactly the kind of light blue that deserves to be called top quality. This aquamarine was once the necklace of a certain noble woman. It was said that the lady who wore this necklace had very beautiful aqua eyes, just like this aquamarine. Though he will never be able to see that aqua color again. Closing the lid of his pocket watch with a snap, Will, who was sorting through the letters, called out reservedly. Your Highness, you've received a letter from Duke Crockford, pass it to me. Felix picked up the letter on the tray and cut the seal with a paper knife. What was written in the letter were roughly things that he had expected. I've been assigned a diplomatic task. Envoys from the Falforia Kingdom were coming to the Duchy of Rainburg and I was asked to welcome them. I believe Duke Rainburg is, yes, he's Elian's father. In other words, Duke Crockford's order can be summarized as follows. Once the winter break begins, stay in Duchy of Rainburg and make some results in diplomacy with the Farforia Kingdom. Also, he had to deepen his relationship with Elian, his fiancé candidate while she stays there. The Falforia Kingdom was an agricultural country situated southeast of the Riddle Kingdom. The details of the diplomacy will undoubtedly be related to trade. Of course, they were an important ally for the Riddle Kingdom. Now that relations with the Empire were very delicate, if the Falforia Kingdom and the Empire were to join forces, the Riddle Kingdom would be caught in the middle. He will have to entertain them to strengthen the alliance while extracting some results from the trade deal. As for Elian, well, I guess that's just a bonus. Having Felix stay at her parents' house would make Elian very eager indeed. After all, Elian was favored by Duke Crockford. Now that she had Duke Crockford's approval, Elian must already feel like she is Felix's fiancé. Well, rather than liking Elian personally, Duke Crockford is probably pushing Elian because his father, Duke Rainberg, is someone he can easily control. Whatever it may be, it's going to be a depressing winter break. The air was somewhat lively with the other student council members all seemingly looking forward to returning home. In particular, Cyril was unusually excited this year and was now preparing souvenirs and counting the days until he would return home. How envious! sighed Felix as he read the letter, but he stopped at the last sentence. His eyes widened, tinted and red. Will, who had been watching him, called out to Felix with concern. Come um, your highness, Will, I've got some good news. Unlike his usual way of speaking, Felix said this rapidly before tracing the last sentence of the letter with his finger. Lady Everett. I would be able to meet with her. Isabel Norton haughtily raised her chin. This should be a peaceful New Year's Day with my family, but now I have to spend my days with someone like you, what a spiteful day. I would never approve of you as one of my family. You should better have spent this winter in a stable, so spat Isabel at Monica with a hateful look on her face, and the next moment she collapsed in tears on the spot. Comma so, with that pretext. I should be able to invite you to my house. Then we can spend our winter breaks together in our household, big sis Monica, as Isabel cried in tears. Monica perplexedly spoke, I am sorry, Monica, who had been busy with the chess tournament and the school festival for a while now, 
had been invited to Isabel's private room for a tea party. And now, they were discussing the winter breaks. Everyone seemed to be talking happily about how they would spend their winter breaks now that it was less than a week away. Serendia Academy has two long breaks a year, one in the winter and one in the summer, but only during the winter break do they encourage all students to return home and close the dormitories completely. Due to the fact that many social events took place during the long summer vacation, and because Serendia Academy is relatively close to the royal capital, students from distant places often go directly from their dormitories to the parties in the royal capital. On the other hand, students are encouraged to return home for the winter breaks, since people in the Riddle Kingdom believed winter solstice should be spent with family. It was also during the longest night of the year during the winter solstice, the Spirit King of Darkness will return to his slumber, while the Spirit King of Light will awaken on the following day, marking the beginning of a new year. During the week until the winter solstice, it is customary in this country for nobles and commoners alike to spend a quiet time with their families. After the winter solstice, the palace would hold a New Year's ceremony for a week, and the nobles from the various regions would visit the palace to greet the king. This ceremony takes a whole week and Monica, who happens to be one of the seven sages, is required to attend from day one. That's why she can't visit Kerbeck County which is located far away from the palace. I'm really sorry, please stop apologizing to me, big sis Monica. I know this is just my selfishness. Even so, I really want to eat meat pie and ginger cake together with you and show you around the attractions of our Kerbeck County, my lady. Your words would only make Miss Silent Witch troubled, when her maid, Agatha, mildly chided her. Isabel looked up and wiped her face with her handkerchief. Ah, I can't continue like this. A villainous daughter should not be crying for real. The only cries a villainous ever sheds are supposed to be crying out of lies. I is that so? Monica shuddered involuntarily, and Isabel's face, which had been crumpled in tears, straightened up. I apologize for showing you such unseemly conduct. As much as I'd like to enjoy the winter break with you, it wouldn't be appropriate if I forced you to come, considering the current situation, the current situation. At the mention of those words Isabel and Agatha's expressions darkened. Comma our kingdom has foreseen a sign of dragon damage in the country. It was a week ago that Mary Harvey, the country's foremost prophetess, the star oracle witch, made that prophecy. The king immediately sent out notices throughout the country, ordering the people to be on the alert for the dragon. By nature, dragons that are vulnerable to cold weather become active in early spring, making winter the season with the least dragon damage. However, once the star oracle which made her prophecy, everyone has no choice but to be wary. After all, she has predicted calamities that could bring down this country many times in the past. And if dragon damage were to occur, the most dangerous area would be the eastern part of the country, where there are many mountain ranges. Kerbeck County is also included in this region. That's why Isabel was lamenting the fact that she couldn't bring Monica along. I, I heard the king wouldn't only dispatch the dragon knights, but also the seven sages to anticipate the dragon damage. And maybe, I'll also be dispatched to your region, oh my. If that happens, please do let me know, by all means, I really meant it. So we can do our utmost effort to provide you with a warm welcome. The Kerbeck household also will do our best to support you in slaying the dragon, Big Sis Monica, um, I'm fine. So please spare some manpower to guard the territory, as Monica left Isabel's room and walked down the hallway, she somehow recalled last year's New Year. As the Seven Sages, she had to stay at the castle from the first day of the New Year's ceremony. However, Monica was so busy developing a new magic formula at the cabin at that time and forgot about the New Year's ceremony completely. As a result, soon after the start of the New Year, Louis grabbed her by the neck and took her to the castle using his flight spell. Louis looked so scary back then. Thinking back about that day, 
Monica climbed up the ladder and pushed up the attic's door. Here we go. I'm home, Nero. Welcome back. But the one who answered Monica's voice as she pushed up the door and climbed into the attic was not Nero. Of course, it was not Len either. Sitting on the window sill, crossing his legs, was a good-looking magician with his chestnut hair in a braid wearing a monocle, Louis Miller the Barrier Magician. Monica was silent for a good ten seconds and then asked in a shaky voice. Was today, the day of the New Year's ceremony, if it were the usual Louis, he would have said, My colleague, it seems you are still half asleep, should I sober up your senses now, and grinding her head with his fist, but today, he seemed to be awfully quiet and responded with a prompt reply. Comma things have gone very bad. Lewis Miller is a man who would smile even in bad situations, while sometimes laughing at it dryly. Now that Lewis had told Monica that things have gone very bad. Looking at the current circumstances, even Monica thinks the case where Lewis says, today's a New Year's ceremony and grabbing her by the neck and dragging her away was far better than this. V10C2 the most expensive clothesline in the world as Earth GT silent which December 26, 2021 5 minutes Miss Monica Everett the silent witch. I want you to escort his highness, the second Prince Felix Ark riddle. Monica was perplexed at Lewis words. Come um, it's just the same thing with what I've been doing now, up until now. Monica had been carrying a mission to escort the second prince while hiding her true identity. So it was a bit anticlimactic when Monica, who had been bracing herself for a very bad situation heard that answer, but the grave expression on Lewis' face was still there and he shook his head. I'm not talking about a secret mission, but an official escort mission. <laughs> Soon, an emissary from the kingdom for Foria will be visiting our kingdom. A discussion regarding a diplomatic trade will be held, and it has been decided that the second prince will be attending. It was not unusual for Felix to be present at diplomatic trade with neighboring countries. Having been on the diplomatic scene since he was in his early teens, he has a track record of negotiating several important deals. The place of the meeting will be situated at the Duchy of Rainburg, the southeastern part of the kingdom, an area which has been categorized as Dragon Damages Area. Monica's face tightened as she started to comprehend the situation. And then she asked Lois. See could it be, my mission is to escort him there, that's right. And since this is an official escort mission, you are required to be present with the second prince and act as silent witch. To Monica's dismay, Lois delivered an even more shocking revelation. It was not the worst yet, is there any worse situation than this? Of course, it is. My stupid disciple is going to accompany you on that escort mission, Louis Disciple. In other words, the always energetic and loud person, Glenn Dudley, will accompany her. HHHH how things, had become like this, this mission was originally intended to be given both of us, you and I however, the old codgers in the capital who were frightened by the prophecy of dragon damage insisted that the barrier magician stays in the capital. In terms of barrier magic, there is no one in this country who can match Lewis. If it is only the speed of putting up the barriers, Monica can do it faster than him as she has no chanting ability, but in terms of the strength, accuracy, and duration of the barriers, Lewis is by far the best. For this reason, some people even call Lewis the guardian deity of the kingdom. Come to think of it. I heard Master Barrier Magician have an excellent apprentice. In that case, how about sending his apprentice on the escort mission? That should settle the matter, ha <laughs> ha This is what the Rotten Minister had suggested. This opinion was approved easily and that's how it became like this. Yet, apparently, Glenn's great performance on the play in the school festival had caught the attention of the minister and the head of the Knight Order. As such, they thought a talented disciple like him should be able to serve as his highness bodyguard. Of course, Lewis was against it, but now the country was short of manpower to deal with the dragon damage, Lewis tried to put an argument forward, instead of sending that idiot disciple, it would have been better to send the silent witch alone, 
but it was rejected. The words that out from Lewis' mouth were filled with anger, and his good-looking face was contorted viciously. The thing is, what frightened Monica was not his vicious face. I have to officially escort His Highness as Silent Witch? Along with Glenn? While hiding my true identity? No matter how one looked at it, it was reckless. Regardless of how tightly she covered her face with her hood, if she opened her mouth, she would be exposed at once. Boo 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 but. I, I would be exposed instantly if I spoke, so I am thinking of adding an attendant to accompany you, so he she can speak for you. Is there anyone you know who knows your true identity and is tight-lipped? Unfortunately, Monica Everett the silent which doesn't have any such acquaintances. The only person who knew Monica and knew her true identity was Barney Jones, but he was too busy preparing for his inheriting the Count's family, so she probably couldn't make him serve as her attendant. That would mean. I would have to ask Nero to turn into a human and act as my attendant. But would that Nero be willing to act as an attendant? Moreover, he would be required to speak on Monica's behalf. She felt nothing but anxiety. As Monica held her churning stomach, Louis also rubbed his temple looking like he had a headache. Comma anyway, this matter has been decided. Quickly find a person who will become your attendant. Why yes, as for my idiot disciple. I'll be sure to give him a very strict reminder not to talk to or bother you any more than necessary. P please do, although Glenn tends to be friendly towards everyone, he gets too close due to his personality. Why are you covering your eyes with a hood, Lady Silent Witch? Why are you not speaking? She could imagine him approaching her in curiosity with these questions. In any case, you'll need your formal robe and a staff. Just to make sure, both your items were at your mountain lodge, right? Monica nodded at his inquiry. The kingdom had granted the seven sages special made robes and staffs for each person. However, since she had to hide her true identity while infiltrating the Serendia Academy, she left that equipment at her mountain lodge. We're running out of time, so I will take a quick flight with my flight magic to retrieve it. Is your robe in the wardrobe? Why yes, Monica had very few clothes which made her wardrobe look so hollow. Since she had shoved her formal robe there, it wouldn't be too difficult for him to find it. What about your staff? You won't tell me it is buried in some papers or something, right? And no, I don't use the staff very often, so, the staff may be a symbol for a magician, but in fact, even without it, it doesn't affect the use of magic very much. Though it can be a sort of magic tool to temporarily stabilize or amplify mana, if the said magician was at the level of the seven sages, its usefulness will be a little to almost non-existent. And since the staffs of magicians generally tend to be made longer as their rank increases, the staff of the seven sages, the highest rank of magicians, was needlessly made very long. In fact, it was longer than Monica herself and the decoration itself took up a lot of space, so keeping it in the cabin would be a hindrance to her work. So, comma I put my staff, at the garden, garden, as clothesline, in response, Lewis Miller was lost for words while putting the most contorted face he had ever shown. V10C3, three people, in the carriage Azareth GT silent which January 1st. 2022 8 minutes after the ceremony at Serendia Academy was over, Elian hurried back to her room in the dormitory to change her dress. She changed from her uniform to her casual dress, fixed her makeup, and changed her hairstyle. The pink hat with a ribbon I had bought not long ago should be a perfect match for this hairstyle, understood. Without saying anything, the maid took the hat she wanted out of her travel bag and put it on Elian. Elian stood in front of the full-length mirror to check her appearance. A brand new coat engulfed with a scarf, on top of her head was a hat with the most fashionable design of today. A beautiful, delicate girl that everyone would want to praise as adorable was what reflected on the mirror. Since I'm going to be riding in the same carriage as Lord Felix, I have to make sure I'm dressed perfectly. 
Elian was in high spirits. Now that the winter break was approaching, Felix would be staying at Elian's house. How could she not be excited about this? Felix would spend the first two days of the winter break at the Hyatt's mansion, and then diplomacy would follow when the emissaries from the Falforia kingdom arrived. And Elian's role is to provide hospitality for Felix and the envoys from the neighboring countries. This was the perfect opportunity to show off for a good point to Felix. According to her father, the one who set up this diplomacy was Duke Crockford, Elian's great uncle. In other words, all these events took place because they had been arranged by him. She must definitely take this chance to secure her place as Felix's fiancé. If necessary, she just has to make it an established fact. If by any chance, yes, by any chance, Lord Felix wandered into my bedroom, of course, I would never do anything so immodest as to seduce him, but if Lord Felix were to be enticed by the sight of me in my nightgown, the two of us might end up together until morning, though it's only my assumption. Of course, I won't ask him out. It's only if Lord Felix is willing for it, and to make that happen, I have my maid to make some preparation. Elian adjusted the ribbon around her collar while constructing many plots to lead Felix to her bedroom. My lady, it's almost time for the carriage to arrive, all right, I'll be there soon. Smiling back at the maid, Elian walked out of the dormitory. Many carriages were lined up in front of the Serendia Academy awaiting their master returning their household. Among them, a particularly beautiful carriage belonging to Dukes Rehenberg stood out the most. She was going to meet up with Felix in front of this carriage. Those who saw Felix getting into the same carriage as Elian would surely spread rumors. The second prince had chosen Elian as his fiancé and he's spending the winter break at Elian's home. Oh, what a wonderful feeling. Aware of all eyes were turned to the carriage of Duke Rehenberg's family, Elian suppressed her desire to skip and stepped forward with the ladylike grace of a daughter of the upper class. As you can see, standing in front of the carriage was a beautiful prince that everyone turns to, waiting for her. Huh? Aren't you the one who played Amelia's role? Hmm, who was it again? She is Miss Elaine Hyatt. The one who spoke in a ridiculously loud and rude voice was not her prince, but Glenn Dudley, who had performed together with Elian on the play at the school festival. And the one who told him her name was Felix who has been standing beside him, which the latter clapped his hands afterward. Oh, that's right. Elian, Elian, wait, why Elian is here, it should be my line. Why was Glenn Dudley talking with Felix in front of the carriage of Duke Rainberg's family? Dudley. She's the daughter of Duke Rainberg. Oh, I had no idea. Hmm, it would have been easier to understand if you had named Delian Rehenberg Hyatt. It was a title named after the name of their managed territory. Is that so? It is, by the way. Why it was named that way? She felt like she was going to lose her mind if she listened to this conversation any longer. So Elian plastered a dainty smile on her face, which was about to collapse. Good day, Lord Felix. It's been a while, Lord Dudley. We haven't seen each other since the play. Elian subtly insisted to the people around her that she had no relationship or anything with Glenn, except when they had performed together in the play. Unfortunately, that thought of hers was torn to shreds by Glenn's. I'm not good with formalities, so just call me Glenn. Especially since we're going to be taking care of each other from now on. So feel free to call me by my name, pardon, what did he mean by we're going to be taking care of each other from now on? At Elian's confusion, Felix explained with a gentle smile. In my stay at the Duke of Rehenberg's household, Lady Everett, the silent witch of the seven sages, and Dudley, the apprentice of the barrier magician, will be accompanying me as my guards. What? To Elian's exclamation, Glenn gave her a smile as dazzling as the sun, then said, Since that's the case, I'm looking forward to working with you during the winter break. The surrounding students were certainly focusing their attention on Elian and the two. However, she's not hoping to be ended in this way. 
Not only were the surroundings looking at her lack of envious, but it was also full of curiosity. Even so, Elian showed her gentle smile, though inwardly she stomped on the ground. In a carriage for four people with two seats for two people each facing each other, it should be a matter of fact for Elian to sit beside Felix. It should be a matter of fact, but why did Felix sit beside Glenn? Lord Felix, would it feel a bit cramped for two men to be sitting there side by side, expressed Elian her concern subtly, to which Felix responded with a beautiful smile. Not at all, in fact, I feel this carriage was more spacious and comfortable than I'd thought. Besides, Dudley is my bodyguard, since she was told that it was more appropriate for his guard to sit next to him, she had nothing to say back. It should be the development of her stumbling on Felix's chest as the carriage rocked, or leaning on his shoulder pretending to take a little nap. As Elian ground her teeth inwardly, Glenn lifted his gaze and looked at Elian as if he had noticed something. Have you finally realized what I'm thinking? That's right, you should be more sensible. No need to worry, Elian. I'll make sure to protect not only President but also you as well. That's not the thing she wanted him concerned about. After forcibly swallowing the almost spoken words of I am not expecting you to protect me, she gave him a dainty smile. Oh my, how reassuring to be protected by you, Lord Glenn, you can count on me. By the way, I think spelling the name Elian is a bit hard, so can I call you just Ellie, there's no way you can. Elian almost blurted out those words. But then she thought. If she allowed Glenn to call her Ellie, then following the conversation, she can beg Felix, could you call me Ellie too, Lord Felix with that notion, it's highly likely Felix would call her Ellie, wouldn't it? Elian responded with an ambiguous smile that could not be described as either a denial or an affirmation and then shifted her gaze to Felix in a perfectly natural gesture. Lord Felix, could you, call me Ellie? Before she could finish, she saw Felix's head shake. Felix's long golden eyelashes were downcast, and he looked somewhat sleepy. It seems that he had been dozing off without really listening to Elian. Um. Lord Felix, oh, I'm sorry. I'm a little sleep deprived. I was really looking forward to today, and I didn't get much sleep last night. Elian's mood, which had been declining suddenly rose after hearing Felix's words. I had no idea that Lord Felix was looking forward to coming to my house this much. Wouldn't this be a good sign for a love relationship? Elian concealed a joy that was welling up in her and said to Felix concernedly, Please take it easy and get some rest, Lord Felix, yet. Yeah. I would do that. Felix rested his cheek on the arm he leaned against the armrest and closed his eyes. While Elian was enraptured by the beauty of Felix's sleeping profile, Glenn poked and prodded Elian. Comma do you need something, Lord Glenn, I'm bored just looking at the scenery, so why don't we play a game? I brought a lot of stuff from my house just for today, Lord Felix is asleep, I don't think we should make too much noise, I'll keep my voice down, so don't worry. Now. Look at this coin Glenn pulled a single copper coin out of his pocket and flicked it with his right hand, then caught it again with his right hand. After cupping both his right and left hands, he held them out in front of Elian. Which one's got the coins in it, right hand? Glenn smiled and opened his hands, the result was a coin in his left hand. Elian couldn't help but round her eyes. What? What? How? I saw you catch it with your right hand, okay, one more time, Glenn flicked the coin with his right hand and caught it with his right hand. Elian watched the movement of the coin without blinking. She was certain that the coin was held in his right hand. It's in the right hand again, too bad, you were wrong what, Elian involuntarily leaned forward and stared at the coin. This kind of trick was a common stunt in street, but Elian. A young lady whose life was restricted to high society, had never seen a street performance or a commoner's trick. You're cheating. You used magic, didn't you? I didn't do any chanting, though. 
and my master told me that it was impossible to teleport an object with human mana, and what Glenn said was a fact. So Elaine could only pout while staring intently at Glenn's right hand. Please do it one more time, okay, one more time, okay, I'll raise the difficulty level a little this time, eh? But I haven't even figured out the trick of the first one yet. Felix, who had been dozing off resting his cheek on his hand, opened one eye thinly and put a small smile on his lips after looking at Glenn and Delian, before closing his eyes again. He found it rather amusing to listen to their conversation, but now he wanted to get some sleep. Just like a boy going to meet his first love, he couldn't get proper sleep last night. After all, he's going to meet the Silent Witch whom he had been admiring so much. From what he heard, Lady Silent Witch had arrived at the Duchy Rainburg, awaiting his arrival. Dot what should he talk about when he met her, thought Felix as he backed to his slumber. V10C4, Encounter with Bartholomew Alexander Azareth GT Silent Witch January 2nd, 2022 10 Minutes Magic was a subject that categorized as a part of mandatory education. While people were not demanded to have practical experience, they were at least required to have a minimum of knowledge of it. In fact, it would only be inconvenient for Duke Crockford if the boy can use them. So the boy was told to keep his hands off from practicing magic, but strangely enough, the more things that are prohibited, the more people want to touch them. More than anything, the boy had magic that he really wanted to use. Magic to make a contract with a high-ranking spirit using a spirit stone. The boy had studied magic on his own to achieve this before finally, he'd succeeded in doing so. Come are you my new master? Upon successfully completing the magic, a spirit appeared in the form of a young man with light blue hair. His features were neat and tidy, but his thin presence made him seem almost ignorable. While his eyes were pale and light blue, its color was paler than the aquamarine of the contract stone. So, the boy smiled faintly and spoke. Spirit Wildinu. I need your help to make my wish come true. I believe this wish should be appropriate to be fulfilled by you, a former servant of Queen Irene. What is your wish? The spirit asked in a faint voice, to which the boy replied with a very thin smile and eyes, that driven by obsession. I want to shine a certain star in the night sky. The vibrations brought his consciousness back to reality, and he remembered that he was in a carriage. As Felix was lightly rubbing his eyes, he heard some joyful voices coming from right next to him. That's unfair, I certain you've done something to the card, I really haven't done anything to the cards. You're just too bad at playing card games, just to let you know, I even had done like this before, okay, it's my win, ah, wait. Glenn turned over the cards in his hand to reveal his hand, and Elian scattered her own cards in her lap and squealed in frustration. The cards they were using had illustrations and letters on them. It was probably a game that was popular among common children. Good morning, you look like having fun. When Felix called out to her, Elian jerked her shoulders up and hit her card in a panic as she looked at him. Gee good morning, Lord Felix. I'm so sorry for making such a racket. No, don't worry about it. By the way, what kind of game is that? I, I was doing this as a part of my social studies to understand the current trends of common people. Elian seemed uncomfortable with the fact that she was playing the games of ordinary folks. But Glenn didn't seem to mind as he collected the cards and said. It's a game that's popular among common folks these days. You have to collect four cards of dragon claws, scales, wings, and eyes, and the first one to complete the dragon wins. The type of dragon you complete depends on the type of parts you have, and the stronger the dragon, the higher your score. By the way, the strongest dragon is the black dragon. He could understand how well designed the game was after listening to Glenn's explanation. Although the rules were simple enough for a beginner to understand, the game involved a lot of strategies and was surprisingly deep. Perhaps this game was designed to help people learn about different types of dragons through playing. 
That sounds interesting, said Felix with an innocuous comment, and Glenn smiled, showing his white teeth. President, would you like to join in this round? I would love to, but I think we are about to reach the mansion. As Felix looked out the window, the driver added, Yes, we are almost there. Glenn regretfully collected the cards and put them in his bag. In addition to the cards, the bag was filled with what looked like playthings and dried fruit for snacks. The fact that there was nothing that would be useful for the escort mission was very much like him. By the time they arrived at the Duke Rainberg household, the sun had completely set. The group was greeted by an earnest-looking middle-aged man with neatly stroked grayish blonde hair. My name is Peter Sams, and I will be taking care of you for the next few days. If you have any requests, please do not hesitate to contact me. Hmm. Felix cocked his head. Felix was vaguely remembered with Peter's face. I think I have seen your face before. Haven't you been at your grandfather's house before? Peter's eyes widened in surprise at Felix's words. For a moment, a bitter expression of anxiety appeared on his face. Peter quickly regained his composure and bowed his head like a servant. It is an honor to be remembered by His Highness. Indeed. I used to be a servant of Lord Crockford. Duke Crockford and Duke Rehenberg have a deep friendship, so having a servant presented to another family is not uncommon. However, the look of anxiety that Peter showed for a moment bothered Felix. Maybe he had done something poorly in the Crockford family and was sent to another family. Or maybe he was a liaison between Duke Crockford and Duke Rainberg. Deciding that it was probably not something to bring up at this point, Felix put that thought away. Well then, I will be in your care from today. I was just wondering, has Lady Everett arrived yet? Yes, oh. Speak of the devil, there were two figures walking towards them from the back of the hallway. A small figure wearing a hooded robe holding a staff in her hand, and a tall young man. The small figure was wearing a hood so tightly to even hide her face from view. However, the dark blue robes and long staff that only the seven sages were permitted to wear indicated that this person was the silent witch that Felix had admired. But instead of the silent witch, whom Felix longed to meet, he was drawn to the man standing beside her. Felix had met this man once before. His black hair was slightly unruly, his eyes were golden and sharp. The man who wore an old-fashioned robe when he met before was now dressed in the kind of neat clothes you would expect an attendant would wear. You are, Elian and Glenn looked at Felix in curiosity, who could not hide his surprise. The dark-haired man grinned and opened his mouth. Oh, I remember, I met your highness once, it's been a while, Bartholomew Alexander, when Felix mentioned the name, the dark-haired man puffed out his chest with pride. Indeed, I am Bartholomew Alexander, servant of the Silent Witch, Monica was so surprised that she thought her heart would jump out of her mouth. Wait 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 wait? Monica tugged on the hem of Nero's shirt and moved to a corner of the hallway. Felix and the others were looking at the exchange curiously, but Monica was no longer in the mood for that. Oh, what's the matter, master? Monica pressed closer to Nero, who was smirking at her, killing her voice. HHH how did you know his highness, Nero, him? I haven't told you? I encountered him when I carried Chili Guy to the boy's dormitory. Why you never told me that, in all likelihood, the chilly guy he's referring to was Cyril Ashley. However, it had been three months since Monica had stopped Cyril's outburst. At that time, Nero carried the unconscious Cyril to the boy's dormitory, but she never imagined that he had encountered Felix at that time. You had only told me I've delivered him at that time e.e. If Monica had known that Nero had met Felix in human form, she would never have given him the role of an attendant. And what the heck is Bartholomew Alexander? You're thinking of another alias, weren't you? Sir Bartholomew Alexander was the name of the hero of a well-known adventure novel. Anyone who hears that name will think it was an alias and will suspect him to a large extent. Nero didn't seem to feel guilty. Instead, he simply stated bluntly. Alias, huh? 
yet, I forgot about it. I cannot remember the names of people I am not interested in, at least remember your own alias. Monica covered her face with her hands and collapsed to her knees. This was a complete mistake on Monica's part in selecting the right personnel. But Nero, the man responsible for the incident, seemed to have no qualms about it. It's nothing to fuss about. Only a few people have seen my humanoid form ever since the escort mission commenced, that's right. Aside from Lynn, the only people who have seen Monica Norton working with Nero in human form at Serendia Academy were Casey during the assassination attempt and Barney during the chess tournament. At least, there was no one here who would make assumptions about the connection between Nero in human form and Monica Norton. Norton. Comma when you met with His Highness three months ago, you didn't mention my name, did you? There's no way I'm bringing it out. I'm not that stupid, I'll make sure to have you explain everything later, but for now, please be a good attendant, you hear me? After adamantly reminding him, Nero slapped his chest saying, Oh. Leave it to me, she felt uneasy, she felt nothing but uneasy. Even so. She couldn't just leave Felix and the others standing at the entrance. After pulling back her hood tightly over her eyes, Monica stood in front of Felix, bent her knees, placed her staff at her feet, and dropped to one knee. It was the utmost courtesy a vassal could show to royal family. But while Monica was on her knees, Nero was standing beside her haughtily. This person is my master, Silent Witch. As the name implies, my master doesn't speak, so if you want to convey something to her, you can speak to me. Everyone in the room was taken aback by the attendant attitude who was more overbearing than his master. Amidst this shocking situation, Felix smiled dryly in reply. Why are you still standing while your master was kneeling down? Why would I kneel to you? My master is her, the silent witch, not you. Even when the royal family standing is higher than the seven sages, I don't care if you're royal family or not, I'll only kneel to someone greater than myself, Nero do. Monica stood up silently and pounded Nero's back with her fist. You can't. Be rude. To his highness. Nero's lips twitched in frustration as if he sensed what Monica was trying to say. Monica tried to get Nero to lower his head. But no matter how hard she reached, the petite Monica could not reach the tall Nero's head. While she carefully did not let anyone see the face behind her hood, Monica tiptoed to get Nero to lower his head. Looking at the exchange between Monica and Nero, Felix couldn't help to let out a chuckle. Despite the fact they were being rude in front of him, he acted magnanimously while showing no anger or displeasure. I see. I'll try my best to be the kind of person you want to kneel down to one day, oh, good luck, with her no chance spell, Monica created a mass of wind to hit Nero's head without his consent. Ah well, yelped Nero in a complaint before groveling down on the floor. What are you doing? Now, Monica fired a second shot mercilessly to silence Nero while kneeling before Felix. Ah 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 ah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry if Nero is being rude to you. I'm sorry I I I I I. As Monica rubbed her forehead against the floor in trembling, she heard a small murmur. Come on no chance spell. Felix's voice sounded quivering, but it also contained some revere in it. Her gaze behind the hood glanced toward the voice, and she saw Felix in his gleamed eyes as if he was moved beyond words. Please raise your head, Lady Everett. While forcefully swallowing the almost out of her stiffened voice, Monica raised her head just high enough not to be seen under the hood. Felix kneeled down in front of Monica and whispered the words that only she could hear. I knew it, you're the person who saved Cyril from the outburst, and also saved me from the, Kong Flame. How did Felix know about, Kong Flame? The only person who was aware of that incident was Louis, Monica and the involved person, Casey. Felix took one of Monica's shaking hands in his and kissed the back of her hand. It's a pleasure to meet you, Lady Everett. Felix's cheeks flushed rosy as he looked at the silent witch, his blue eyes somehow enraptured as if he were, 
a young man in love. Her current situation reminded Monica of the man called Egan the Entertainment District who had praised the silent witch. Comma please forgive my behavior. To tell you the truth, I'm actually a big fan of silent witch. When it comes to her, I can't help but be rather talkative, oh oh. And now I remember, so he was telling me the truth. It was a bit of shock for Monica when she heard that statement in the Porter Antiquarian Bookstore, though it was only from a stranger's perspective. However, when she was confronted with the reality of the situation, sweat began to trickle down Monica's palms. As Monica's face stiffened under her hood, Elian raised her voice somewhat agitatedly. Peter. Peter. His Highnesses and his entourage had just arrived. Please prepare some tea for them first. Yes, my lady. Peter responded promptly to his lady's order and urged the group to the parlor. When Monica was released from Felix's hands, she held her fast rising heart above by pulling her robe down. What should I do? I feel like I'm going to throw up from nervousness. As she killed her voice while letting out a ragged breath, Felix smiled as if he'd been enraptured at Monica. Now, we should be on our way too, Lady Everett. If it were possible, she would have preferred to stay here, but Monica was Felix's bodyguard. And if the royal family urged her to join them, she could not afford to disregard their request. So Monica followed the group to the parlor as she hugged her cane to her chest and hunching over with a downcast expression. At this time, she forgot that Nero was sprawled out on the floor, completely oblivious to what was going on. V10C5, people you shouldn't make eye contact with, the Seven Sages, Azareth GT Silent which January 15th. 2022 13 minutes at the time his master assigned this mission to him, Glenn had raised one question. Master, what kind of person silent which is, in response to Glenn's question, Louis Monocle slipped off before he adjusted it again with a look of utter dismay. Before we start, let me ask you, how many of the seven sages do you know? Well, including Master, I had heard about the Star Oracle Witch the artillery magician, and, who else is left, it was less than half of the total. Lewis massaged his creased brow with his slender fingers and sighed out exasperatedly. I cannot express how lamentable it is that the disciples of the seven sages are unable to name all of the seven sages. Fine, I guess I should explain more about the seven sages to you so that you won't embarrass yourself in front of Duke Rainberg. Make sure you get it into that empty head of yours, Glenn responded, yes, in reply and straightened up like a well-behaved dog, Lewis then raised up one of his slender fingers. First up, Mary Harvey, you probably know her as the Star Oracle Witch. She is an expert in astrology and also the most senior among the Seven Sages. If I had to describe, she's a lustful woman who eats up any beautiful boy she catches sight of. I am not a pretty boy, so I'm safe, I guess, Glenn might think his statement was a matter-of-fact manner, while from another perspective, his face was charming enough and quite lovable. If he had been a few years younger, he might have fallen under Mary Harvey's clutches, although Glenn is unaware of it. Lewis raised up another finger. Next is Raoul Roseberg, the Thorns Witch. Her name sounds manly enough to be called a witch. He's a man. In fact, it could be said, the name of Thorns which is more like a title name to him, a renowned magician family had passed down its household title to its successor. And Raoul Roseberg was the fifth generation of the Thorns Witch. Raoul Roseberg had the biggest mana capacity which can be categorized as monstrous in our kingdom, and yet he had wasted his talent, did nothing with magic but only studying plants. If you make eye contact with him, he'll shove his homegrown plants in your face. I have an aunt in the neighborhood who does that. Ignoring Glenn's pacifist comment, Lewis raised up his third finger. Third, Ray Albright the Abyss Shaman. The curse is master. If he caught sight of a young woman, he would always ask, Are you falling in love with me that won't be a problem? I'm not a woman after all. Fourth. Bradford Firestone the artillery magician. 
He loves talking explosion and battle maniac geezer who challenge anyone that make contact with his eyes. Master, I wonder why I feel you find it more cumbersome the more you explain it. So, did you realize it now? Lewis didn't seem to take offense and raised up his fifth finger. Fifth, Emmanuel Darwin the Jewel Magician. He might be a master of auxiliary magic who had contributed greatly towards the development of magic tools, but he's just a typical scoundrel who's good at currying favor with money-hungry nobles. Wow! I thought you would explain it in a roundabout way, but it was the most elaborate description. Incidentally, he's in the Second Prince faction and cahoots with Duke Crockford. He also sees me as his enemy. And as my disciple, in case you make eye contact, it's likely he will pick a fight with you. Among the seven sages, the jewel magician was the most influential in noble circles and regarded Lewis who was in the first prince faction as his most hated enemy. Since Glenn was unfamiliar with politics, the only thing that he knew was that the second prince is the student council president. Wait? Since master's in the first prince faction, would that make Prez my enemy? Glenn owed him something, so if it's possible, he didn't want to antagonize him. Anyone who enjoys eating our meat cannot be a bad person. But, wait. Prez knew that I was Barrier Magician's disciple. Is he perhaps thinks me as his enemy? That would make him sad if he thinks that way. Glenn was close with Student Council President, and he also didn't make fun of him. Moreover, they surprisingly clicked very well. While Glenn mulling over this matter as he crossed his arms, Lewis raised up his sixth finger. The sixth person and also the youngest seven sage, Monica Everett the Silent Witch, I have a friend who's got the same name as her, you could find that name everywhere. So it must be a coincidence, well, a person named Monica may be everywhere, Glenn thought as he convinced. Since she's got the same name as his friend, it might be easier for him to remember. Miss Silent which had elected to the Seven Sage at the same time as I did, so you could consider her as my colleague. And in our current magic world, she was the only person who could use the No Chance spell, now I remember. She was the person who had beaten you into a pulp at the Seven Sage's selection, Lewis gave Glenn a kick on his sheen as his smile shined beautifully. How childish. Lewis continued his words and composed to Glenn's bitter expression. To describe the silent witch, she was extremely shy at strangers, with interpersonal skills at the bottom of the heap. She even had carried a stupid legend who passed the seven sages interview fainted after her nervousness got her to hyperventilate. She was so fragile that if you make eye contact with her, she will faint instantly with her eyes rolled back. Ahem, she's a very delicate person, you see, so you better don't try to look at her face or ask her many questions. While nodding in understanding, Glenn sorted all the information in his way. Barrier Magician, Master. So scary when angry. Star Oracle Witch, Great at Divination. Once make eye contact, she will eat you. Limited to handsome boys, Thawed Witch, she is a he. Once make eye contact, he'll pester you about his plants. Abyss Shaman, the cursing person. Once make eye contact with him, he will ask you are you falling in love with me artillery magician, a person who likes shouting boom, boom. Once make eye contact with him, he will pressure you to have a duel. Jewel magician, was bad terms with master. Once make eye contact with him, he will try to pick a fight with you. Limited to Glenn, Silent Witch, a person who had beaten Master into a pulp. Once make eye contact with her, she will collapse with her eyes rolling back. After sorting all this information, Glenn realized something. Master, if all you said were true, then I can't make eye contact with half of these people, especially the latter three. Proud at his disciple realization, Lewis raised his chin smugly. Now do you understand how capable your master is? With this, you should respect your master more. Master, Mrs. Rosalie said that it is not good to raise your own reputation by putting others down. Hearing his disciple mention his wife's name, 
Lewis kept his smile and kicked his shin twice. Right, twice. Lewis cleared his throat after looking at his grieving disciple, then continued with his words. That's all about the seven sages. Now, let me hear your opinion. So, while rubbing his pain on his sheen, Glenn spoke out his honest opinion. I think all the seven sages are eccentric people, of course, you don't include me in, right, you stupid disciple, looking at his master cupping his right fist, Glenn immediately shook and desperately. His fist was so tough to even make him wonder if his fist was made of steel. He even felt being tossed off with a wind spell was still better than receiving his fist. So he hurriedly changed the subject. Um, T that's right. Master, who is the strongest among the seven sages? Is it you, Master, I assume? Hearing his disciple changing the subject with a question, Lewis dropped his cupped hand and showed a mixed expression. Of course, it is, or so is what I wanted to say, but it depends on the circumstances. His master who was always confident and got high pride was making an evasive answer. Lewis Miller the barrier magician is a combat magician who boasted second place in the number of the dragons he had slain single-handedly since the founding of the Riddle Kingdom. As for the number one, it's the retiring Graham Thunders the Thund Magician, even without the favoritism of his students, as far as Glenn knows, there are not many people who can compete with Lewis in magic combat. But Lewis placed fingers on his chin and opened his mouth with a difficult look. It depends on the circumstances and their current strength and weakness at that time. Among the seven sages, there are three combat-oriented magicians, the artillery magician, Silent Witch, and myself. If we talk about firepower alone, that artillery magician, who got the largest mana capacity among the three and has the ability to enhance his firepower sixfold with his magic formation, was come at the top. The firepower they're talking about was used to fight the dragons, so it really mattered. And half assed magic that can't injure the dragon can only make it stop its track for a while. So, Artillery Magician was a rare magician specializing in offensive magic who can injure a dragon without aiming at its weakness which is on its brow. On the other hand, Silent Witch, she specializes in the speed casting and precision of her magic. While I can cast one spell with a shortened chant, she can cast two large-scale spells at the same time. Moreover, along with her extremely accurate aim, the most common weakness of the magician is the time they chant to cast a spell. Even a few seconds can be a decisive life or death situation. No matter how strong your spell is, it would be useless if you can't use it. But, for Silent Witch, one second is enough for her to cast a spell. The moment the battle has begun, she can break her opponent's neck instantly. Shudder I can't imagine I can come up with victory if I fight her. After hearing his master's explanation, Glenn pondered. Then thought, how does his master, the barrier magician fight? Master, can you win against the two if you fight them? Like as I said before, it depends on the circumstances. Artillery magician has the highest offensive power but is weak at defense. Especially when if he wants to raise his offensive power, it would take him more time to cast. While Silent Witch, despite the lack of experience in battle, no one can beat her in the casting speed, even then, because of her extreme lack of physical, she can't use a fight spell, I see, so Glenn nodded convincingly. Lewis Miller the Barrier Magician has a high level in both offensive and defensive magic, on top of that. He's able to use them with great dexterity. What's more, with his great physical and bright mind, he can use either his head or fist to fight his opponents. It can be said that the artillery magician specialized in offensive power, the silent witch specialized in speed and accuracy, while the barrier magician is a balanced type. In other words, master is a jack of all trades but master of none. Ow, 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 ow. Lewis gripped his disciple face with his right hand and his slender fingers were pressured onto his skull before he continued his words. The silent which would come up as the best if we fight bound by the rules. And I was lost by it last time, 
Though, if in the battlefield where rules were no longer in effect, I can win against her. I can beat a pushover like her with a little effort. The magic battle is a duel held in a specialized place within a barrier. Within this barrier, damage can only be inflicted by magic, and even if you take damage, it won't affect your body, but your mana will be declined by the amount of damage you take. Since they can practice actual combat safely with that method, the Magician Training Institute Minerva and Magician Troops often held magic combat to train their magicians. And in the election of the Seven Sages, they also organized magic combat for examination. In which, Lewis was suffering a complete defeat which still haunted even until now. In summary, you're good at dirty battle, ow 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 ow. Remembering the talk and the pain of the iron claw of his master, Glenn stared at the silent witch who sat in the carriage before him. The small girl dressed in a loose robe sat hugging her staff so tightly onto the body. A person who looks at her at glance would surely think that she's a kid pretending to be a magician. Hmm, I really can't imagine her as a person who had beaten master into a pulp. After arriving and greeting the people at Duke Rainberg household, the servants guided the group into a large room before attending the dinner party. If possible, Glenn wanted to explore this huge mansion, but since the servants had informed him to stay here, he couldn't possibly wander around without permission. Especially when Glenn was Felix's guard right now. Scanning through furniture, wallpaper, and the curtain inside the mansion, everything looked so expensive. While its glaring of numerous patterns and ornaments all over the place only left prickling to his eyes instead, and it's his true thought. Elian has retreated to her room to change her clothes, leaving the room only four people of Glen, Felix, the silent witch, and a self-professed attendant who called himself Bartholomew. And for an attendant, he looked so fishy. Though he professed himself as the silent witch's attendant. His attitude was more overbearing than his master, and the name itself implied more be more of an alias. And currently, he was sitting leisurely on the couch with a big yawn on his face. Glenn's master had chided him to not ask the silent witch many questions, but in his boredom, he tried to approach her to chat. Lady Silent Witch, I heard you had beaten my master into a pulp a long time ago, is that rumor true? The silent witch jolted before squeezing her trembling body close to the man in attendant clothes and tugged his sleeve. Maybe she wanted him to speak in her stead. But, the man only answered with I don't know, after letting a bore yawn. I didn't know what has happened at that time. Well, no matter who the opponents my master is against, she can easily defeat them, isn't that right, master? The silent witch hurriedly shook her head in response but the attendant didn't seem to follow her desperate. In the midst of all this, Felix, who had been silent and reserved until now, opened his mouth. That's a good question, Dudley. It's truly a pity I didn't present during the Seven Sages selection two years ago, but from what I read in the report afterward, Lady Everett had cast a large scope spell to force the other candidate at bay, without letting them close by. I heard the spell she cast after combining magic formation of remote spell and low-cost spell without chant had truly impressed the other seven sages. And the moment she activated the great and large-scale area spell, which followed by a low-cost spell she had cast in no time, I instantly understand, what kind outcome her battle against Barrier Magician would end up. Is it only his feeling or did Felix speak rapidly right now? Even Glenn who has studied magic could only understand half of what Felix had said. Well, I might have understood some of it, but I feel it's really cool, smiling in response, Felix then continued fluently. Speaking of Lady Everett greatness, have you heard about a low-cost magic formation, which greatly reduces the consumption of mana usage and spell but has very long chance to cast? While at the basic level it would normally require around 30 minutes to chant, at the advanced level it will need up to a few hours, in which case, it makes it not suitable for actual combat. But she had cast such a magic formation without chant. Even for a layman in magic, 
they would understand the greatness of that stunt. Even her mana capacity was not great, she can cast a big scale magic formation. Which resulted in the defeat of Barrier Magician, Glenn can't follow Felix's talk at all. But he honestly thought, he really earnest in his study and spoke. You seem very knowledgeable about the Silent Witch, Prez. In response to the amazed Glenn, Felix showed his perfect smile without blemish before answering. It's only natural for a member of the royal family, so it's because of a member of the royal family, I swear it doesn't have anything being a member of the royal family. Sitting on the couch while curling herself, Monica panicked agape. Ever since the servants had guided the group to this room, the silent witch could sense that Felix has been trying to approach her to talk. Once Felix opened his mouth, his eyes sparkling, with his tongue running more smooth than usual, it was like he had nothing to hide anymore. Though Glenn didn't find it strange. Felix's passion for the silent witch was genuine. At first, she still had some doubt about it, but after looking at his talk now she was certain. He even remembered the battle record two years ago with every detail. It was no longer a passion of admiring person. Every time Felix talks about the silent witch in detail, Glenn would respond with as expected of a royal family though only people like Glenn can be convinced with that reason. Who, though I can't follow all your words, I think royal families are quite impressive. Correction it convinced people like Glenn and Nero, yes. Well. Nero doesn't know what His Highness thinks about the Silent Witch. In other words, the only person who knew that Felix admires the Silent Witch was only Monica. While Monica continued to listen to Felix talking about the Silent Witch, the realization had only made her stomach hurt even more. V10C6, the method of Third Secret Azeroth GT Silent Witch January 17, 2020 to 11 minutes today. The kitchen in the Duke Rainberg household was extremely hectic. Not only was the daughter who had been attending a distant school returning home today, but the royal family was also staying here. And it was only the warm-up before the envoy who will be visiting by tomorrow or the day after tomorrow. Since the employees had to serve the guests the lavish dishes every day. The atmosphere in the kitchen after the end of the first night banquet was like having finished the arduous battle on the first day. Of course, there are still jobs to be done like cleaning up the party and making preparation for the next day. Lord Felix seemed to be pleased with the today night banquet. Please keep up the good work tomorrow, Peter, the servant who served the meal, announced those words after arriving in the kitchen and all the chefs showed a relieved expression as they pat their chest. He then added in a plain tone to the latter. Also, Lady Elian wants you to prepare some drink for His Highness Felix. His Highness? Should we brought the wine with the highest quality? Peter shook his head at the chef's words and spoke to him with an expression like a faithful loyal servant. Prepare the third secret. A shocked expression appeared on the servants. The third secret. It's a special drink made by mixing extracted fruits with strong liquor and aphrodisiac spices. It's a drink for a special occasion when the Duchess wants to invite his husband to spend a night. Our young lady has finally, I see. Lady Elian was, each of the servants looked deeply moved as they prepared a special drink for their lovely young lady. In ceremonies and other formal occasions. The participants were not allowed to wear hats and other headgear except for the three things. These were the crown of the king, the holy cap of the priest, and the hooded robe of the magician. In the past, magic was a skill that was monopolized only by royalty and nobility, and both royalty and nobility wanted to keep the existence of magicians a secret. Therefore, until a long time ago, Hiding their faces had become a formal attire for magicians. Nowadays, its custom has become obsolete and many magicians tended to reveal their faces on formal occasions. But, many still regard that hiding their faces in the hooded robe is the true formal attire for magicians. This was also the reason Monica can hide her face at the ceremony. But, even she wants to. It would look abnormal if she kept hiding her face at the banquet. 
so Monica could only decline people's invitation to join and kept firmly standing on guard. Even after Felix had invited her to eat together or Glenn volunteered to take turns on guard, Monica still stubbornly declined. And during the banquet, she kept standing on the edge near the wall alongside Nero. I am worn out, my stomach, my stomach's rumbling, ugh. After returning back to her room, Monica flopped onto her bed, while Nero spread open the night snacks like bread and cheese which he had received on the table. It's just the first day, you know. If you were already this exhausted, how you can hold this from now on? Nero bit some cheese and said oh this cheese tastes good in a good mood. Goodness, whose fault do you think it is that I'm this tired? Looking back, half the cause was Nero's conduct manner. Monica rolled on the bed, laying her body facing the ceiling before looking at Nero bitterly. Nero. I didn't know you have met his highness before, it's not important anyway. I only chatted with him for a while when I met him while delivering the chilly guy, just to make sure, he hasn't discovered my true identity, has he, of course. He also used a lizard to probe my identity, but I caught it with my fingers, a lizard, what did he mean by a lizard? While Monica had some doubt. Nero put a slice of meat and cheese between the bread and knot it before continuing to her. Ha ha it has wires share it gay, Nero, swallow your food before talking, while Monica expressing her exasperation, a knock suddenly came from the door. Wondering who's coming at this hour. Lady Everett. I'm sorry for interrupting your rest at this hour. May I have your time for a while, the sound coming behind the door was Felix's voice. Panicked, Monica turned her gaze to Nero. The latter gulped his food and returned her gaze. What do you want? Want me to shoo him away, I can't turn him away. At the very least, please keep your manner in check so as not to be rude to him, replying to her with all right, all right in a sloppy tone, Nero opened the door after checking Monica has put her hood on. Contrary to the expectation. Felix standing in the hallway was not in his nightwear, but in his usual clothes with fewer ornaments, hanging a big basket in his arm. Felix was a bit surprised after he found the one who opened the door was Nero. Are you staying together with Lady, Mr. Alexander, of course. I'm her attendant. More importantly, what do you want for visiting her at this hour? Looking at Nero raised his chin threateningly. Felix held out his basket hanging in his hand. Bottles of drinks, a small enamel pot, and a fruit cake were contained in it. I haven't seen Lady Everett join the banquet activity and saw her eat anything afterward, so I asked the servants in the kitchen to make some night snack for her. Nero's eyes sparkled instantly. What a good guy are you? Come in, Nero replied without asking for Monica's consent. Since the girl herself didn't plan to drive her guest away, Monica had prepared a chair for Felix while at it. After thanking her for the gesture and sitting on the chair, Felix's eyes widened after looking at the bread unfolded on the table. Oh, you had your night snack already? I guess I've done unnecessary things, you came at the right time, the meat and cheese were not enough for my fill. What is inside the jar? They told me it was extracted fruits juice. Without waiting for Felix's answer, Nero opened the lid of the bottle and directly gulped down the contents into his mouth. This is good. I can taste some spices mixed in. I suppose it's some spices meant for adults. The sense of a hot feeling rising inside my gut felt so good. I heard there's no alcoholic content mixed in. Only extracted fruits juice though. Tilting and puzzled. Felix opened the lid of the pot. Inside, the hot soup with mist billowing out. Lady Everett, how about having some warm soup? After pondering for a while, Monica nodded. Her stomach was already rumbling, and she didn't know if she can finish her bread up. Maybe she could at least manage to drink some soup. The soup was made by simmering root vegetables, grinding them, and mixing them with milk to make the soup thicker. One sip of the soup had brought her a sense of relief from the gentle sweetness of the vegetables. While Monica was huffling and puffing as she sipped her soup, 
Nero was gobbling up his fruit cake and his eyes were sparkling. What the hell is this? This is so good. The taste of alcohol is superb. The alcohol is made from fruit soaked in its region's famous distillate. By the way, what is your relationship with Lady Everett? Nero clutched a fruit cake in both hands and answered with a mouthful of food. Her attendant, your appearance had suggested you more like her parent than her disciple. Are you perhaps her relative, or her lover? Monica couldn't help but sput out her soup. Trembling as he covered her mouth with her hand, Nero was laughing heartily in response. No way. She's not my type anyway. After all, Nero prefers females with a sexy tail, but Felix seemed not convinced with Nero's answer. Logically, if a man and woman were staying together in one room, either both of them was a lover or family. You know, I was her familiar. No, what is again? Um, after searching for the right word to replace the familiar, Nero hit his palm with a cupped hand. Right. I'm her lowly servant. Monica pulled down the edge of her hood and shook her head desperately. Felix expressed his troubled face, looking alternately at Monica and Nero. Comma her lowly servant. Huh, that's right. She saved my life. Not long ago, when I'm troubled in agony with a bone of a bird stuck on my throat, she, Monica hurriedly pulled Nero's hem. Maybe Nero also realized that he's speaking too much, so he cut his words and stuffed another fruit cake into his mouth. After gulping the last cake, his golden eyes glared at Felix. That was dangerous. I almost felt your bait question, I'm not guiding you into a bait question, I'm just asking honestly, so you just honestly want to know about me, huh, rather than Nero himself. Felix actually wanted to know more about the silent witch. Answering him with a wry smile, Felix took out a bundle of paper from the bottom of the basket. I have personal questions I want to discuss with Lady Everett. If you may, could you take a look at this? Nervously reaching out her hand, she then took the bundle of paper with her hand. She really wondered what's written in the paper. Is he perhaps wants some advice from her related to the trade with the neighboring countries? Or maybe he wants to propose some arrangements regarding the escort? If it was, she didn't have the confidence to be able to answer these questions properly. While the thought made her anxious, she gave a cursory look, then, her eyes widened under her hood. Is this a magic formation? What's written there was a detailed description of a certain magic formation and its application. It was a magic formation that Monica was familiar with. After all, it was none other than a new magic formation that Monica had developed herself. Monica raised her face a little and saw Felix smile with a bashful expression. To tell you the truth, I have a friend who admires you so much. I made a promise with him that if I meet you, Lady Everett, I will bring this writings and ask her to review it, as surely, the friend he's speaking of is referring to that eag in other words, he's referring to himself. Though he said it was about his friend, the person he's talking about was none other than himself. And the way he spoke sounded like that way. Putting his hands on his knees, Felix looked at Monica with apparent anticipation. Since she can't disregard his request. She decided to give the reports a cursory look. This is, incredible. He's done it very well. Though there were some noticeable flaws that need correction, the rest was written exceptionally. If His Highness really thought this concept himself, his knowledge might have reached the Minerva upperclassmen students. But, Monica knew that Felix's grandfather had prohibited him from studying magics. And she also knew he was not allowed to own any practical book, so he secretly collected writing papers published by Minerva's student. Even with such limitations, he was able to come up with these writings. He. He truly loves magic so much. Such a person had been seriously thinking about the possibility of applying magic she had devised, and Monica's pride as a magician was touched with that thought. To put it frankly, it made Monica happy. Comma moving to her writing table, Monica took out her inkwell and quill before scribbling some words to review his writings. As a magician, 
Monica wanted to respond to his passion for magic honestly. Even if the other party was the second prince of this country, Monica will not compromise on the math formula and magic formation. She altered the letters a little so that her handwriting would not give away her true identity, pointing out the mistakes and areas that were not taken enough into consideration. After that, Monica wrote down the words in the blank space of the writings as follows. These writings were quite intriguing. I believe it could be improved even more if the problems I pointed out are corrected and the lack of data on the amount of mana flow increases. After writing all her thought, Monica returned to her sense. W wouldn't this make me sound really rude? You I uh, who do you think are you, Monica? I I I I guess I should revise my review more pleasingly? While that thought running inside Monica's mind, she heard a gulping sound right behind her. Turning her gaze back, Monica saw Felix standing behind her, looking the written reviews over her shoulder. Ah uh, ah uh, uh. I will be executed. I will be executed for Lace Majest. Monica panicked under her hood, but Felix didn't look displeased. Rather he's more impressed than ever, squeezing the chest of his clothes. Following by sitting beside Monica, he reached out your hand as if he wants to propose marriage to her then spoke. Lady Everett. I'm really honored to be able to receive such great praises from you, Nero, who looked disinterested up until now, suddenly cut the conversation. Isn't it about your friend? Why yes, I'm sure my friend will also feel that way, Felix smoothly added and held the bundle of writings that Monica had reviewed in his chest as if it were a treasure. Thank you very much, Lady Everett. I'm sure my friend would be delighted to hear it, as Monica felt a slightly mixed feeling inside, she took back a piece of the reports from Felix's hand and wrote something on its back. I'm looking forward to seeing your writings again, the look of joy on Felix's face when he saw that was almost impossible to hide. Perhaps her comment was unnecessary if she wanted to hide her true identity and continue to perform the escort mission. Nevertheless. The magician Monica Everett felt she should express her honest feeling. Much more so after Felix said this as he stargazing after the school festival was over. That he had to give up and let go of the things he loved. Still, I... I didn't want you to let go of the things that you loved. So Monica secretly vowed that she would not destroy his dream, even if his feeling toward the silent which was only an illusion. Though Felix said that this feeling might be his first love, what he felt for the silent which was definitely not romantic feelings. It was pure admiration and respect. If that is the case, Monica will continue to maintain her image as the silent witch that he admires, and continue to occupy the position of the seven sages. So please don't give up. The things you passionate about. After Elian Hyatt watched Felix visit the silent witch's room from behind her hiding place, she can't help but grit her teeth. Oh my, oh my, oh my, what was that? Hey, what had just happened? After the dinner party, she ordered the servant Peter to prepare the third secret, which has been passed down to the women of the Hyatt family for generations. Unfortunately, Felix had mistakenly taken the third secret with the extracted fruit juice. So Elian changed her strategy and planned to visit Felix's room under the guise of traveling has exhausted me so much, but this exciting feeling prevents me from sleeping, so I wondered if we could have a little chat. However, when she was imagining Felix's mood after drinking the third secret, she saw Felix enter the silent witch's room while bringing it inside. Uh, isn't that you? Elaine? What are you doing here at this hour? While Elian gritting her teeth, Glenn called out to her in his nightwear. She wondered why this guy always appears in every, single, time at times like this instead of Felix. Oh my, that should be my line Lord Dudley. What are you doing here at this hour? Glenn's friendly face tightened as he looked over at Elian with a serious look on his face. Comma actually. I have something I really need to ask you, Ellie. Oh my, oh my, oh my. Perhaps this was a confession of love, she wondered. After all, the winter vacation is the most time where young people cut loose. 
Of course, Elian was only interested in Felix, so she would refuse such a man's confession in scorn. To tell you the truth, I need to go to the bathroom, but I'm afraid of the dark, so can I ask you to tag along? Thus, the memory of Elian Hyatt's wonderful night ended with her guiding Glenn Dudley to the bathroom. V10C7, fighting over the Wheat Azeroth GT Silent Witch January 29, 2022 8 minutes The envoys from the Falforia Kingdom arrived on schedule, and the diplomatic dealings began after Felix, the second prince of the Riddle Kingdom, greeted the group. The history behind the Falforia Kingdom goes back to when it was originally two separate countries, the Fal Kingdom and the Foria Kingdom. In the beginning, they formed an alliance and were called the Allied Nation of Fal and Foria but later years, it had become the current Kingdom Falforia. The aftermath had caused the descendants of the Kingdom Fal and Kingdom Foria, whether its citizens or its rulers, to compete over with each other, and its internal politics in the Kingdom has by no means been stable. This time, the Falforia Kingdom had sent eight envoys. Supervised by two leading diplomats, Count Barrow and Count Mayer, they seemed to be at odds with each other in a four-on-foray show, if you including their subordinates. Count Barrow, a descendant of the former Fowl Kingdom, had a relatively friendly, or rather respectful attitude toward the Riddle Kingdom. On the other hand, Count Mayer, a descendant of the former Foria Kingdom, was reluctant to secure the trade with the Riddle Kingdom. As the former Folia Kingdom was adjacent to the Empire's territory, they had been in cooperative relations with the Empire since the old times. Perhaps Count Mare was inclined to seek influence from the Empire rather than the Riddle Kingdom. So, to make this trade successful, I have to get Count Mare's support. Felix casually observed the envoys of the neighboring countries as he read the diplomatic materials. The plump Count Barrow has been flattering Felix in a very obvious way since a while ago. He's probably wanted to strengthen the alliance with the Riddle Kingdom. On the other hand, the slender Count Mare looked dismissive and hardly looked Felix in the face since he arrived here. However, Felix deliberately turned to Count Mare and smiled at him. I have to say that the wines of the Falforia Kingdom are something else. I also tasted the new Pearl Dian the other day, and it was especially good this year. Felix brought up the subject of wine instead of wheat which was his main interest and it made Count Mare look at him warily and his narrow eyes narrow even more. Come indeed, that wine made from the finest grapes was our kingdom's specialty. Or perhaps, you're looking for the bread that goes with it instead of the wine itself, I believe, as Count Mare said. His goal this time was to see how he could increase the amount of wheat imported from Falforia. Although Count Barrow was eager to approach the Riddle Kingdom, Count Mare was blatantly opposed to the idea. I heard that your kingdom was planning to establish a new garrison of the Dragon Knights in the Duchy of Rainburg. Felix had expected Count Mare would reproach him with this topic. He smiled inwardly. The eastern region of the Riddle Kingdom is particularly prone to dragon damage. Consequently, dispatching dragon knights from the royal capital would take a long time to arrive, and this had been viewed as a problem for many years. Thus, establishing a garrison in the southeastern part of the Riddle Kingdom to station the dragon knights, or that should be. However, the other countries viewed the establishment of the new garrison with a slightly different meaning. The Dragon Knights, as the name implies, are an army of knights proficient in fighting dragons, but they do not always fight only against dragons. When war breaks out, they will naturally direct their blades to the opposing countries. And the Riddle Kingdom was planning to establish a garrison to house the Dragon Knights in the Duchy of Rainburg, a territory close to both the Empire and the Falforia Kingdom. From the side of the Empire and the Falforia Kingdom, this could be seen as a deterrent. Furthermore, Count Mare is a staunch supporter of the Empire. There's no way he could overlook the construction of the garrison. Well, considering the current situation, Count Mare's concerns are justified. The idea behind this garrison project came from Felix's grandfather, Duke Crockford. And Duke Crockford has his eyes set on the Empire. 
and a war would break out sooner or later. Most likely, he's probably planning to use the Dragon Knight military post as a supply base if he wants to strike the Empire. Duke Crockford has been trying to strengthen his military power in the eastern part of the country under the guise of preventing dragon damage. As Count Mayer had apparently seen through Duke Crockford's intention, he opened his mouth cautiously, playing with his mustache. Indeed, I believe building a new garrison would need a lot of provisions. It's better to have more wheat and wine in stock, Felix has agreed with his statement. That's why he needed to increase the number of imports from Falforia with this deal. Moreover, the Duchy of Rainberg is relatively close to the Falforia Kingdom, which makes it easy to bring imported food to the newly established garrison. In other words, transportation costs can be greatly reduced. But is there really a necessity to build a new garrison? Pardon me for saying so, but hasn't your country done enough to deal with dragon damage in the past? Thanks to the cooperation of regional lords, it ended up well. But it had caused more burdens in some territory, and to lessen their burden the establishment of a new garrison has become necessary, Felix replied promptly, but Count Mayer didn't seem to catch the meaning. As if to follow up on Count Mayer's words, Count Barrow, also of the Falforia Kingdom, spoke up in a forward manner. Please pardon me for meddling in the affairs of another country, Your Highness Felix. I think Count Mare didn't quite understand the danger of dragon damage. After all his territory is within the former Foria Kingdom, an area that is relatively safe from dragon damage, HMPH, disposable mercenaries should be enough to deal with dragon damage. Felix smiled bitterly inside as he listened to Count Barrow and Count Mare bickering amongst themselves. The topic that should have focused on the wheat imports had shifted to the garrison and dragon damage. He had to rethink the situation once again. After that, he needed to figure out a way to persuade Count Mayer. Felix looked sideways at his guards, the silent witch standing by the wall, and muttered in his heart. I'd like to show off my good points in front of Lady Everett if possible. In the room next to where the diplomatic meeting was taking place. Glenn was sitting around a table with Bartholomew Alexander, the attendant of the Silent Witch, playing cards to pass the time. They were stationed in an adjoining room, ready to rush to the scene in case of an emergency, while the real reason was they had nothing to do at the moment. Here's my completed water dragon cards, ah uh, I lost a guy away Bartholomew spread his cards out on the table in frustration. Glenn rounded his eyes when he saw the cards in his hand. Mr. Bartholomew, you are aiming for the Black Dragon cards again. Black Dragon was the most difficult and the highest score one could get to aim. Each player takes turns drawing cards from the deck to create a hand of seven cards. To achieve the Black Dragon cards, one requires three cards of a Black Wings card, a Black Scales card, a Black Claws card and a golden ice card along with three mana cards. And the probability of getting these cards was like getting a royal straight flush in poker. I don't feel like making a bunch of weak dragons. It's better to aim for the biggest one, it was meaningless if you can't win the game, you know besides, the water dragon is not a weakling at all, it's a weakling, alright. A lower tire dragon that can't even properly understand communication. Although there are many types of dragons, they can be roughly divided into lower tire and higher tire dragons. The most common of the lower tire dragons are wyvern and herbivorous dragons. The second most common are fire dragons, water dragons, and earth dragons. These three are sometimes classified as mid-tire species in academic circles, but they are basically treated the same as lower tire species. And the higher tire dragons are the red dragon, blue dragon, green dragon, yellow dragon, white dragon, and black dragon, namely, the dragons with colors in their names. While the scale colors and skeletal frame was similar, its sheer size was two heads bigger and its fighting prowess far exceeded the lower tire dragons, with the red dragons superior to the fire dragons, the blue dragons superior to the water dragons 
The green dragons superior to the wyverns and the yellow dragons superior to the earth dragons. And above all, the higher tire dragons can understand human language. Even some of them are said to be able to use advanced level magic. In particular, the white and black dragons are special dragons with no inferior equivalents, and their very existence itself is almost legendary. As a result, they gave the highest scores in the game. Now that I think about it, I heard the higher tire dragons rarely appear in public, but do they all speak human language? The higher tire dragons possess the same or higher intelligence as humans. As such, they seldom appear in public and rarely attack humans. To Glenn's naive question, Bartholomew answered as he looked at the pattern on the card. The high retire dragons may understand human language, but they don't have the vocal cords to speak it. So, they speak the same language as the spirits. Though most humans can't understand them, is that so? But if they altered their vocal cords, they could produce a human voice. He seemed to be an unruly and unmannerly attendant, but he was surprisingly well versed in various fields. As Glenn was honestly impressed, Bartholomew opened his mouth as he spread out the cards in the deck. By the way, loud boy, I'd prefer if you call me Glenn O. What does this cursed card implies? Ignoring Glenn's insistence, Bartholomew drew a card marked Cursed from the deck. It doesn't matter what kind of dragon series you had completed, but if you get a curse card in your hand, your dragon series will become Cursed Dragon. Do the curse series give a high score? If you completed this series, you'll get minus 10 points while the rest players will get minus 20 points, regardless of whether it's a lower or higher tire dragon. A dragon attached with a cursed card will be called a cursed dragon. A dragon that spread curses around and its existence itself can be called a disaster. However, since cursed dragons rarely appeared, their rarity was seen as the same as white dragon and black dragon. Even in history, its appearance can be counted with the fingers in one hand. I see. It's a well-made game. All right, let's do another round. As Bartholomew said this and was collecting up the cards, there was a knock at the door and a servant came in. It was Peter, an earnest-looking man in his prime. Please pardon my intrusion. I would like to request you to accompany our guests in the next room, as they will be going hunting soon. Hunting, do they do that around here? Yes, it will be held in the forest nearby within a short distance ride on a horse. I also have prepared horses for you. At these words, Glenn and Bartholomew looked at each other. Hey, loud boy, can you ride a horse? I've never ridden a horse before. Handling its meat was, added the son of butchery in a faint voice, but it's made Peter and Bartholomew startled. And in some areas in the Riddle Kingdom, there are some customs of eating horse meats. They treated its meats like cutlets. V10C8 me talking between boys as earth gt silent which january 30th 2022 seven minutes monica was riding it up a horse and it lost at the moment lady everett please held in tight on to me said felix sitting in front of her with an excellent posture maybe because he used to ride a horse the figure of him holding the rein looked elegant and monica was sitting closely behind him with her legs to the side Negotiations with the Falforia Kingdom seemed to have hit a stalemate, but both sides had mutually accepted that it would not be over in a day. To deepen their friendship, Felix had arranged a hunting game today. However, a fatal problem was discovered when they were about to move to the hunting grounds. Monica, Nero, and Glenn, the three people who were supposed to guard the guests, had no experience in riding horses. Though Glenn can use a flight spell to follow them, he can't be flying around continuously during the hunt. After all, maintaining a flight spell uses a huge amount of mana. In Lynn's case, she can maintain a flight spell for a long time because she's a spirit. Glenn was relatively athletic, but it was hardly possible for him to keep up with Felix and the others who were used to riding. As for the non-human Nero, his presence only make the other animals scared and trembling, so it's impossible for him to ride a horse. 
After some discussion, it was decided that Monica would sit together with Felix in the back. Two adults might be too heavy, but her small body should not add much burden to the horse. As for Nero and Glenn, they used a carriage to reach the hunting ground and were ordered to stand by in the rest area during the hunt. This time, the Duchess and her daughter also tagged along in the hunting game. They were there not to participate in the hunt, but rather to enjoy a chat over a light meal. You could say it was a picnic. Together with Nero and Glenn, the picnic group would also stay there in the rest area. I, I would be rather in the picnic grew up. For Monica who had no experience in equestrian, riding a horse was too stimulating for her feeble heart. To put it bluntly, she was just too scared. Even a little sway had already made Monica terrified of falling. What's more, sitting close by near Felix was bad for her heart. Every time the horse swayed, Monica panicked, afraid that the hood would come off. Each time it happened, Monica desperately clung to him in close eyes, until Felix shifted his gaze back to look at her. Are you scared? She honestly wanted to nod at his question, but ever since she had vowed to herself last night, she wanted to keep the image of respectable silent witch in front of Felix. Not to mention her role as his guard, it would be unbecoming for her if she was scared of riding a horse. So she kept her silent without acknowledging nor denying it and Felix reined his horse to stop in response. Pardon me. Felix grabbed her waist to lift Monica who's desperately killing her voice while pulling over her hood down before placing her in the front seat before him. In equestrian, it's common to assign a woman to sit behind the man if they ride a horse together. Otherwise, it only makes it hard for the man to rein the horse. Especially during the hunt. It will only trouble him if Monica sat in the front. M.M. M.M.M. Felix then pointed at his gun on his shoulder when Monica was flapping her hands in panic. I'll only interrupt his hunting if I sat in the front. You don't have to worry. This rifle was only a prop, comma I've been planning to give some credit to the guests since many of Falorian like to hunt, apparently. Felix was trying to gain some diplomatic advantage by making the other party feel great by handing over the credit in this hunting game. Well. He didn't think Count Mare's opinion would change over something like that, but it would good starting point for elevating his mood. I guess diplomacy is a tough job. The main prey in this hunt will be non-hibernated foxes. Hunting a fox can be quite tricky since it can hide in its nest, but the servants had closed its nest's entrance and they brought hunting dogs that keep it at bay, so it can't hide anymore. It only left the guests to hunt the prey they find which made this hunt like a game. Casey probably would frown upon it if she hears about this. For those living in poor areas, hunting is an act to secure valuable foods, but for the wealthy, it's just a sort of game. Even they were bearing the same noble titles, they had held different principles, and Monica felt that she had just glimpsed the hard facts of this country. Hey, is hunting a fox really that much fun? Does fox meat taste good? Its meat smells really bad, so it's not suitable to serve as a dish. You still can eat it if you boiled it over a long time and mixed it with many seasonings, but it will not taste like meat. Elian was annoyed behind her smile as she listened to Glenn explain to Bartholomew about meat, saying it meat tastes better if served in this way or when the best season for preparing the meat. Why can't I be the one who shares the ride with Lord Felix? I know it's inevitable since Lady Silent which had a job to guard his highness, but why doesn't she choose another person to share the ride? Or rather, why do these guys begin talking over the meat instead of protecting Lord Felix? Can't they have more civil topics to discuss with the women like us? And why didn't you say anything, mother? Her mother, Duchess Rienberg covered her mouth with her folded fan when Elian met her eyes which then smiled involuntarily. Oh my, you seem very knowledgeable about meat, young Dudley, my knowledge came from my parents as a butchery, well, is that so? Then could you give me some advice on serving rabbit meat? As you can see, my daughter is a picky eater and doesn't eat much, 
Elian maintained her graceful smile and screamed inwardly. Mother? Why did you just casually join in on their meat discussion? After all, the Duchess had tried some recipes, to which Glenn nodded earnestly. When choosing rabbit meat, I advise using female ones, since it's more tender and tasty. Before processing the meat, it's better to age it for about three days. Also, it is important to cool the abdomens with snow or ice so it won't leave a bad smell, though in the daughter of the Duke's perspective, it was a necessary knowledge. Glenn looked unusually wise when explaining meat. His appearance may look reasonably good if only he's not talking about meat. It may be easier to eat if you turn the rabbit meat into patties before adding more herbs and seasonings. As you already know, rabbit meat tastes best when tender, and turning it into patties would prevent it to lose its juice. It's also delicious if you turn it into a soup. And the secret is to hammer the bone so the broth will come out easily. In the first place, Elian's dislike of rabbit meat came from her childhood, when she witnessed a cook skinning a rabbit. So hearing someone talking about how to prepare meat or how to pound bones to make soup stock was not something Elian would enjoy. Elian stood up quietly and jumped on her horse tied to a tree. Elian might have not been an expert at horse riding, but she could get on and off the horse by herself or at least go for a quick ride around nearby. The servants had prepared a horse with a saddle for sideways riding for Elian, even she was wearing a skirt. It wouldn't prevent her from handling it. Peter. Accompany me on the ride. While Elian asked the servants to follow her, Glenn shifted his gaze to her in surprise. Do you need to go to a toilet? In which world there's a lady who rides a horse to go to the toilet? Elaine replied with a smile at his tactless response as her temple twitched. I wanted to have a little stroll. Then let Bartholomew or me accompany your stroll. It's not necessary. There are no large beasts in this forest and I won't get lost since it's like a garden for me. Peter, who was pulling the horse, was familiar with this forest and would prove no problem for him to find a way. Glenn seemed wanting to say something but was interrupted by aliens urging on Peter. Peter. Let's get going. Understood. Peter seemed to be perplexed but after considering this forest had little to no danger. He obeyed Elian's order and made the horse carrying Elian walk. As Elian gripped the horse rein in her hands, she let out a sigh while hoping to meet Felix by a chance in the forest. Our Eli will be okay, the Duchess offered Glenn a drink who worriedly said as he kept glancing into the forest before smiling gently at him. You might find her a bit selfish, but please don't think her badly. I never thought of her as a bad person, said Glenn while drinking a warm tea and the Duchess exclaimed an oh my inwardly as she smiled gently in response. Her gentleness looked similar to her daughter, or perhaps more than that of her daughter. Meanwhile, Bartholomew was gnawing heartily at the bread as a light meal while darting his gaze around. What's the matter, Bartholomew? I sense something approaching rapidly. I got a weird feeling in its mana. His golden eyes shifted around until it stopped in the direction where Elian advanced toward the forest. Hey, loud boy. You bring back that fluffy girl. I feel something ominous approaching, something ominous. I can't explain it since I've never sensed Mana this disgusting, but from its shape and size, I can say it's, Bartholomew's words sounded so vague that it was hard to feel the tension. The other servants looked at Bartholomew and puzzled. Amidst this situation, Bartholomew paused to catch his breath, raised his eyebrows then shouted. Come a dragon. No, wait, something resembling a dragon is approaching here.